Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 18.1 to the public. iOS 18.1 is available around the world at the same time for everyone and is available on all iOS 18 supported devices from the iPhone SE second generation all the way up to the iPhone 16 Pro and 16 Pro Max. There are many features and changes for all iOS 18 supported devices, but Apple intelligence features are available for iPhone 15 Pro, 15 Pro Max and iPhone 16 models initially in the USA only. However, if you set your language to us English, you generally can try them out. Now the overall size is going to vary depending on device and what version you're actually installing it from, but it can be as big as seven gigabytes, depending on the device you're installing. It overwrites the other storage and has a lot of different features. So let's go ahead and take a look at those. Now in this video, features will be divided into Apple intelligence and then features available to everyone else. So be sure to check the links in the description for all of the chapters. Now, of course, Apple intelligence is the first new feature. And if we go into settings and scroll down, if your device supports it, you'll see Apple intelligence and Siri. If you go into this, if you haven't enabled it already, you'll need to enable this and then you'll have a bunch of new features. You have some options for it as well. We'll come back to that in a little bit, but the first set of new features is called writing tools. This is available throughout the OS in different areas, but if we go into notes and maybe you have something here, such as maybe a few sentences or paragraphs you've written, you'll see there's a new button here that we can tap on that activates writing tools. Writing tools allows you to proofread, rewrite, rewrite something friendly, professional, or concise, or also summarize it, view the key points, list, or table. If we want to proofread, just tap on proofread. It reads everything, corrects it, and shows you that we have five different changes. If we want to revert those changes, tap on revert, or maybe we could just have it rewrite it altogether. So we'll give it just a second here and it rewrites it. It put it into one paragraph, and then also if it selects everything, you can tap on it, slide over, and you can find your writing tools here if you didn't already tap on it below. If we go back here, maybe we'll go back, we'll revert that back to what we had before, go back into our writing tools, and you'll see that here as well in the keyboard. So you can go into the same thing. Let's rewrite it so it's a little bit more friendly. So it says Apple is set to release. It rewrote it and made it a little bit larger, but it says Apple is about to unveil the first set of Apple intelligence features. Again, we can revert, write it more professionally, and again, give it a second here, and it rewrites it where it says Apple is poised to introduce its inaugural suite of Apple intelligence features with the release of iOS 18.1. This is what it does over and over. You can again, of course, not use any of that information, but my favorite thing is summarize, tap on summary, and it will summarize what you have here. You can even do bullet points if you want to do that. And you'll see that it summarizes it here. So lots of really helpful tools, key points again. There it is below. It takes out the key points from whatever's written. So this is a great feature and it works across just about everything. It works in messages and more, and we'll come back to that in a little bit. Now, Siri is one of the biggest upgrades as far as the overall visual look of it. Once this Apple intelligence feature is enabled, press and hold or activate Siri. And you now have this new Siri version that sort of highlights the outside of your phone and looks completely different. This is something completely new. However, this is not much of an updated Siri. It looks new, but we're waiting for Siri 2.0. That's coming later. We also have the option for type to Siri. Now again, you can see talk and type to Siri in the settings, and you can turn that off if you want to for type to Siri, and you can turn off the trigger words as well for Hey, and then the word, or just saying it by itself but I have type to Siri on to easily activate type to Siri. Just double tap the bottom of the phone. It brings up the keyboard and then you can type in whatever you want with this great new animation. So we could say something simple such as what is the weather tomorrow? And you'll see as I'm typing, it gives suggestions. So we'll just tap it there and it gives me the weather. What is the next F1 race again? You'll see there, it says Brazilian Grand Prix, Sunday, November 3rd. Where is it? Even though it says where it is, it understands context. And then of course gives me the same results. But as I type, it starts to go give you a bunch of suggestions as well. It has richer language understanding. So you can ask it and it understands even if you mistakenly say a word or stumble on your words as you're speaking. It also can give you maybe different directions or how to set a wallpaper as well. So let's ask it instead of typing it this time, but now it has built in tools to help with that. 
how do I set a wallpaper? And it gives me the actual instructions on how to set a wallpaper. It says open settings, tap wallpaper. We'll try something again. How do I change the screen brightness? And there it gives me the information for that. So anything you want to do on iOS, it will now give you the information. Now, if I unmute the phone, let's go ahead and take a listen to the new sound that Siri makes as well. We'll listen one more time. So it has a nice new sound and when it's talking back, it has more of a natural sound as well. Also, it's been updated for CarPlay and when using Apple CarPlay, we actually have the new animation as well, as long as you have Apple intelligence enabled and there's a new sound. So you'll see it highlights the outside ring. And as I speak, it sort of highlights as though I'm speaking, try it again and you'll see what it looks like. So it looks really nice. And if you're using CarPlay with Apple intelligence, you'll get this update. Photos gets updated with Apple intelligence for a few different things. If we go to search in photos, we have better understanding of maybe what we're wanting so we can talk with it with a more natural language or simple description. So maybe red car, and then maybe you could put in the actual year as well. So you'll see some cars there with red in them. It doesn't understand that the car is red, but it understands that there's red near a car. So it's getting a little bit better. You can search for a name, a dog, an animal, a pet, whatever you'd like, and you'll find it. So it's getting much, much better, but there's some more impressive tools that use Apple intelligence. And within a photo tap on the edit button here, then we can go to clean up and we'll be able to edit the photo. You'll see it's giving suggestions by highlighting them sort of with the Siri animation of what it thinks it can delete. If we just tap on it, it will delete it. Give it just a second. It deletes that out of the photo. Sometimes it does a great job. Sometimes it doesn't. We can also highlight something. If we want to maybe get rid of this tree here, we can try and do that. And sometimes, like I said, it does a great job. It deleted that. You would never know it's there except for maybe the stump that's right down here. So we'll get rid of that and it goes away and you would never know that that tree was there. It did a great job. So depending on what it is, it does a really great job. Also, if we take a look at maybe something with a face in it, and again, within cleanup options on my own photo, if I highlight over the top of my face, you can actually pixelate it just by doing that. If you have multiple faces and they're smaller in the background, tap on it and they will pixelate. And within photos, if we go down to memories and tap create, we now have the option to create a movie memory just by typing some context. So maybe cars in 2022 and 2023 without people. So I don't want any people in the photos. We'll see if it gets that we'll tap done. And then it has this great animation that it's creating the overall photo. We'll give it just a moment here to complete. You'll see it called it the year of the autonomous vehicle, 2022 to 2023. It puts it to music, has some nice photos, sometimes throws in video and overall does a great job. So you can try this over and over. You can pause it, see the different photos within it, delete them if you don't like them, or just go through them all together. That same natural search carries across over to the app store as well that we have also in photos and with Siri. So maybe you want to search for the best games in the world. Now it gives you a bunch of games based off what you searched or the best games in the past month. And we'll see what it says. Then it should give us information and we've got all of the best games from the past month or so based off that search. So it's much improved and again, sort of works throughout the whole OS. Thanks to Apple intelligence. Something else that goes along with notes has to do with transcriptions. Now you could maybe record voice in the voice recording app, or you can record it here, but maybe add an attachment, record audio. And now we can go ahead and see the transcription of that audio. This is a new voice recording talking about iOS 18.1 and Apple intelligence. And so you'll see already at the top, we have summary. So if we tap on summary, it will look through what I just said. And it says iOS 18.1 introduces new features powered by Apple intelligence, enhancing various aspects of the operating system. 
This summarize feature carries across all throughout the OS, for example, to notifications, notifications, get some great summaries. And that's one of the best things about this update. If you've got mail or maybe different information coming in from different applications, you'll have the option to actually select what you want it to summarize. So let me show you an example. And as I was setting this up, I captured a screenshot in photos and it says, choose notifications to summarize. So it can summarize just the things you select, or you can change it later in settings. So for example, if notifications come in from a couple apps or people, it will actually summarize what they say in multiple messages or multiple notifications. When you receive notifications on your lock screen, you'll see that I have two notifications from someone and then also two from another person where it's actually combined two different notifications into one to give me a summary of what they're saying. Like I said, the same thing is true throughout the OS. So that carries across to things such as Safari. So if we go into Safari and within Safari, if maybe we go into a web page here and then we go into the reader mode, you'll see we have a little star there, show reader, and we can summarize this and just see what the overall article is about. So again, it's built into Safari as well. And it also carries across to things such as mail. So it will summarize your email and within email, you'll see that we have Mark Gurman's power on newsletter that he has every weekend and underneath it, it has a little summary. So it's summarizing what might be included in the email. And then in the upper right, we have these three dots where we can show the priority email inbox. So if we have something it thinks is a priority, it will show up at the top. And if we go in and maybe reply to this, even though this is just a newsletter we wouldn't normally reply to. As you reply to this, you'll have all of your writing tools here as well. This is a new email and you'll see if we tap this arrow, we have Apple intelligence so we can bring in proofread rewrite and it can help us out with that as well. And as you're typing, it can give smart replies. So maybe you're typing a sentence, it can suggest things similar to what it can do in messages. If we go into messages, this is from my friend Brom, you'll see yes and no sort of highlight with Apple intelligence features. Since he asked a question, did you get a new dog? You can reply quickly with yes or no. If I go back out and back in, you can see them re-highlight indicating again that it's Apple intelligence. We also have smart reply here as we're typing back. Yes, I got a new dog and I didn't actually, but it's suggesting things emoji and much more. Also, if you're in a group with a ton of people, it can summarize this as well. So summarize goes across everything within settings. If we scroll down to focus, we have a new focus mode that's powered by Apple intelligence. If you don't see it, go ahead and add it and you'll see reduce interruptions and it has the icon for Apple intelligence under here. The first time you turn it on, it says using on device intelligence, reduce interruption analyzes the contents of notifications and only interrupts you with those that are deemed to be important. You can share with friends. You have notification silence, turn on custom lock screen or home screen pages, or schedule it to turn on automatically or turn it on from the control center. So we can set this up just like any other focus mode and then customize it as needed with different focus filters. But this is great. It seems to work pretty well, but may need to be customized a little bit to make sure that you get the notifications that you're looking for. There's also some privacy settings to go along with this. Again, go into your settings and go back down to privacy and security. Scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll see Apple intelligence report. If you go into this, it uses face ID to unlock, and then you have different reports. You can export that activity and it may include personal data, but it's all on device. It's giving you a report of what you've used it for. You can turn this off entirely if you want to, and it will stop recording Apple intelligence activity if you want it to. So just be aware that that's there. You may want to turn it off if, if it's on, or if you want to see what it's doing, you can leave it on. Now that's the first set of Apple intelligence features. However, there's more features to go along with iOS 18.1 that's available to all phones. The first and most notable one is call recording. This is available to all iPhones. However, you will get the summarize feature if you record the call on the newer phones with Apple intelligence. If you don't though, you can fully see a transcript. So for example, if we go and maybe place a phone call, once you're in a phone call, you'll see this is a FaceTime audio call in the upper left. You'll see a new icon. This allows you to record the call. Now, initially it's only available in the USA and Canada, but hopefully it rolls out quickly around the world.
Tap on it. It will announce this call will be recorded. You'll see it says audio prompt will play. It announces it. Then it begins to record it. You can also take notes on the call. So while you're speaking, you can type notes. And as you continue to talk, you'll see your little information here with your waveform. And when you're done with the call, just go ahead and tap on this to stop recording or end the call completely. If you want to view the saved call, you can go into it. Here's the call itself. We can play it back. And then if we go into it, we even have transcriptions. So you'll see here, as I was speaking, it recorded that information. So it works really well and it can even summarize it again with Apple intelligence based devices. Another update we have on all devices is if we go into settings, tap our name at the top. Then if we go into sign in and security within sign in and security, you'll now see not only do you have your information, but you have the option to add an email or phone number. So it says these email addresses and phone numbers can be used to sign in, verify your identity and help recover your account. They can also be used to reach you with iMessage, FaceTime, Game Center, and more. You can use these as your primary email or go into it and add another one. So we'll tap on add email or phone number. Now you have the opportunity to add an email or phone number, existing email address or phone number, and these will be your main phone numbers. And if you tap on one of your email addresses here, you'll have the opportunity to set it as your primary email. So that's really nice that that's available. And you can even change that email address if you want to change your primary email as well. If we go back into messages, one update they've done for everyone is they've changed the emoji keyboard. So within the emoji keyboard, it's now larger for every single emoji. We have our stickers here as well. And as we type the different emoji, they're either large type, another one, they get a little bit smaller type, another one, it gets smaller again, and then type another, it gets even smaller and that's the smallest size. So that's an update they've changed. I'm not aware of a way to revert that to the other keyboard as I know some people prefer that, but that is something they've updated. They've also added a new update for RCS. If we go into settings, scroll down to our apps, go into messages and within messages, if we scroll down to where we have RCS, if it's available where you live, you'll now have a new option. If it's available for RCS business messages, your carrier will send, receive and verify your RCS business messages. That's something that's available in this update. Again, it has to be supported by your carrier though. Another update we get that doesn't require Apple intelligence has to do with AirPods pro two. If we go into our settings, so let's go in here, you'll see our AirPods. And if we go into them and we have our AirPods updated to the latest version, which currently is seven B one nine, I have a separate video on that, but if you have them updated, you'll see a new option for hearing health. We now have hearing protection. So hearing protection can bring in loud sound reduction based on the mode you're using, whether that's transparency or adaptive modes and can bring down ambient noise. If it's a little bit too loud and could damage your hearing. We also have hearing assistance. This is a new feature that allows us to use our AirPods Pro 2 as hearing aids if you need that help. So you've got media assist where it'll boost the overall clarity of music, videos and calls, or just use them for hearing aids to boost voices and sounds around you. You can take a hearing test. So I'll just go into this briefly to show you how it works, but I have a separate video showing some of this, but if we get started, you have to answer a few questions. If you're over 18, you're currently experiencing allergies. And have you been in a loud environment, such as a concert, a construction in the last 24 hours, if you haven't, you've met the criteria tap next, then you have to find a quiet place where noise is okay. And as I'm speaking, it's too loud. So let's give it a second here. Then it says, place your AirPods in the correct ear. Then we'll go ahead and it will test the overall fit. Start the check. As long as everything's good there, we can tap next. Do not disturb will be turned on. Then it will play some tones and you tap the screen to let it know you've heard those tones or not. So we'll tap next, start test, and I'll show you what it looks like. So as you go through the test, tapping the screen, it will measure the overall hearing ability and let you know whether or not you have moderate or mild hearing loss or none at all. We'll end the test there. And then if you do have that, you can adjust this based on your needs. If we go into the TV app, give it a second to load here within TV. If we go to this section down here, it says continue watching on Apple TV plus this used to be the up next section. They've replaced it with continue watching, which I think makes more sense. If we go into music, give it a second to load, go into this song or any song, go to your three dot menu, go to share the song and within share song. If we swipe over, 
you'll have the option to share directly to TikTok now. So this is a new update they've added. So as we scroll down, we have the option to share directly to TikTok if we want to share that music. On your home screen, if you have the clock widget, and if we go into edit our home screen, go to customize and go to tint, we can tint the overall icons and it also tints and then makes your clock translucent. So that's a little bit of an update when you're in tint mode. So if you want to change that, it will change with the clock and look a little bit better. If you use game center, this actually gets quite a big update. If we go into our settings, then we go down to game center within game center. We have some new options. Now we can customize our profile and we have the option to change our nickname or customize the picture itself. We also have a new option to help friends find you. So you can enable that or turn that off and activity sharing actually replaces profile privacy. So we have that option. Now, if you want to select that here, you can change it to everyone or only you. Also, if we go into our contacts, not only can you see achievements and different friends playing games, but you can also request a friend from this place as well. If you're not a friend with them on game center, you can just add them from contacts. There's some updates for the camera. If you're on an iPhone 15 pro or 15 pro max, and we go into the camera here, we can swipe through and you'll actually see an option now for spatial. So we can capture spatial photos and videos here where we have a new option to switch between the video camera and photos. If we want to view those on an Apple vision pro, they've brought that specifically to the 15 pro and 15 pro max. Since the cameras are in alignment, I'm not sure why they haven't brought it to more, but it looks like that's all it's available for, for now on the iPhone 16 models, we have the new camera control button press it. And if we have press it, we have a new option with this update. So you'll see. We'll do that again, swipe back, and we actually have the selfie camera or forward facing camera option. So they've added that as long as you're under the control where you have the cameras here itself, you'll have that option. Now we also have an update with control center. This is something I think a lot of people will appreciate again on all phones. If we swipe down, you'll see everything looks pretty much the same, but if we press and hold, let's add some controls. We have some new controls for connectivity. So you'll see things such as Wi-Fi or VPN or airdrop or Bluetooth. These were not there before you had to go into the other menu. So if you want them here now, you can add them. They don't fully turn off Wi-Fi. So if you go into settings and then we go back here, so we'll go up to Wi-Fi, you'll see it's still enabled, but they actually have the button here. If you want to enable it or disable it from here, instead of going in and they've again, redone this update as well. So a couple little changes here that have been updated that are really nice for control center. Something else that's nice is if maybe you've been customizing this, you'll see mine looks a little different. We have an empty page. Maybe I messed this up a little bit. If we go back to our settings and then we go to control center under control center. We now have the option to reset control center, reset it. And now it's back to how it was when you first turned on the phone and got everything set up so you can fully customize it. I would love it for it to actually save overall custom profiles, but that's something that's not available just yet. If we go into shortcuts within shortcuts, we have an update here. So within shortcuts, if we type control center, there's actually a new update that allows us to show the control center and we could show it. We could hide it. We can toggle it or ask each time or have a shortcut input. This is great because now we can assign the control center, maybe to the action button. So if you just tap done, you can actually assign it to show the control center. If we tap on it, it shows the control center. And again, if we go back into our settings, go over to our action button, then we can assign it to maybe a shortcut here. There we go. Create a shortcut. And then we actually have show control center. So now that we've got it enabled, press and hold the action button and it opens the control center. Another update we have in shortcuts has to do with health. So if we add a new one, we'll type health and you'll see, we have a bunch of new options. So again, if we go into shortcuts on iOS 18, you'll see, we have quite a few more options here. So let's go back and you'll see there's a few different ones. So search in health, we have log workout, of course, like we did before, but open data, open sleep schedule and open view. One thing they've needed to update for quite some time is under our settings display and brightness. They finally updated the wallpaper to match iOS 18. It wasn't in iOS 18. It was showing the iOS 17 wallpaper. So that's been fixed. 
Something else they've updated has to do with the dark mode icons. More icons are now in dark mode. So maybe some of them were not showing up for you. We're seeing more and more such as third party apps and everyone else adopt this. So you should see just about everything in dark mode, at least for the most part. Also iPhone mirroring with the Mac has been updated to allow for drag and drop with the iPhone. So if you want to drag and drop a file between the Mac and the iPhone, you can now do that. Now, aside from all those features, Apple also has some security updates. Their security release website typically gets updated after the release, usually by an hour or maybe a few hours afterward. I'll link them in the description if you want to check it out, but iOS 18.1 plus all the other updates should be listed here as well. Now, along with this, Apple also fixed quite a few things to do with iOS 18. So one of those has to do with podcasts. In particular, if you were playing a podcast and sometimes you noticed maybe an episode looked like it was already played, but you hadn't listened to it, they've now fixed that issue where sometimes it was marked as played. They've also fixed an issue if you're recording a video in 4K60, so maybe you're using your video camera, you've recorded in 4K60, and then sometimes you find out that the device is warm and the video would stutter when you're going through the video playback in photos. So that's something they've actually fixed in this update where it shouldn't stutter anymore as you're going through the photos. You can just sort of scroll through and it then should be working as you would expect. So... As we're scrubbing through fast, you'll see it jump around and then you can play through it and it should be nice and smooth. They've also fixed an issue where digital car keys sometimes wouldn't unlock or start a vehicle with passive entry if you restored from a backup directly from an iPhone. That's something they've fixed. They've also fixed an issue with the latest iPhone 16 and 16 Pro models where sometimes they would unexpectedly restart. So I know many people had that issue. It would just restart on its own. That should be resolved. I've also noticed that AirDrop is working better and just general overall connectivity and the experience is much improved. I think iOS 18.1 feels much more like what iOS 18 should have been. Many people have said that throughout the years with iOS 17, iOS 16, and all the older ones. Wait till the point one update and it typically seems to be much improved. There still does seem to be some issues from time to time for some people, but most of them seem to be resolved. I haven't heard of any touch issues with iOS 18.1 now that it's released to the public or the RC released, and many people are saying it just works much better. Battery life should be much better as well. However, it's hard to say exactly what it will be like, but many people have reported to me that it's much improved. And if you've just installed it, give it at least a week for everything to stabilize and really improve. And we talk about that in our weekend follow-up videos. And I've been using iOS 18.1 and 18.2 all throughout the betas and all throughout sort of the overall experience of them. And with my main phone here, you'll see it says update finishing in the background. This sometimes can take a week or so, but the battery health on this phone is 32 cycles with 100% capacity. And when I was running 18.1, it was getting me through the day. You'll see three hours and 52 minutes of screen active time, four hours and two minutes of screen idle time. And I used under 75% of the battery. It easily gets me through a day. It seems to be pretty solid and iOS 18.1 definitely seems to improve a lot of things for most people. Now, as far as the overall performance, even on older devices, most people report it's quite smooth. The keyboard seems to be better and just general things such as scrolling or ProMotion on one of the pro devices seems to be improved. So it looks like things are much better, much more stable and more refined with iOS 18.1. The same can be said for the overall heat of the device. Neither of these devices have been overheating. They're nice and cool to the touch, even showing you this for over an hour recording the video or maybe more time recording the video and getting this ready. It stayed nice and cool overall. So definitely an improvement from day to day use. And in general, it's just a much better update. So if you're wondering if you should install iOS 18.1, absolutely for the overall security updates, but also if you want a more stable experience and want to experience all the new features and the first set of major bug fixes, this will definitely be an improvement for you and hopefully resolve any issues you were having. As far as overall benchmarks, well, I typically run those every weekend and let's take a look at that. And these are some of the best scores I've seen on the iPhone 16 Pro Max, 3,519 for single core, 8,000. 1,718 for multi-core. It's a huge improvement over the previous update, and I think it's a much more stable experience so far, and hopefully it continues to improve. But if you're having poor battery life to, 
to start with. Once you install it, you enable Apple intelligence, give it a few days to a week for everything to complete in the background. It's going to take a while for the battery to stabilize. And so that's everything with iOS 18.1. We can expect new Macs and more this week if you haven't seen some of the announcements already. And iOS 18.2 is in the works to show us the next set of features with Image Playground, Genmoji, and much more with Apple Intelligence. Now, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.